Hello my friends, thanks for stopping by. I hope you're all having a great day. Today's video is my update to my intermittent fasting. How much weight have I lost? What kind of foods am I surviving on? What else am I doing to help the intermittent fasting move along quicker? Uh, okay, let's start out with, I chose intermittent fasting because I researched it and I felt it would work for me, or I read so many great things about it, I wanted it to work for me. I wasn't sure if it was going to because I have always been a breakfast person. So a breakfast person um, almost refuses to see any other way because it's been drilled into our head that we must eat breakfast. I was guilty. I was one of those people. Now there are people in this world that must have breakfast and that is great. I'm going to be talking about intermittent fasting. I'm going to talk about the hours that I have chosen to fast and my hours have eliminated breakfast. That's not to say that I don't have breakfast. I just have it later if I feel like it, because that's another, another thing that's great about intermittent fasting. You can eat the foods you enjoy. Of course, it should be a whole food, clean diet if you really care about your health. Uh, I mean, you can go ahead and eat those Doritos and cupcakes and whatever, and you're probably still going to see some weight loss with intermittent fasting, but you aren't going to see the results that you really want to see, and you are not going to feel as good as you could feel if you were eating whole foods. I'm off my soapbox now, okay? So anyway, what I thought I would do today is I would just update you on how it's going for myself and Lou because Lou has lost 20 pounds. He's been doing it since April. And Lou, um, he eats whatever I make him, but you know, Lou will still have a beer if he feels like it. Nothing's off limits, nothing. It's all what you want it to be. So if you're somebody who enjoys a glass of wine, you just have it within your eating hours. You don't decide to have it. Oh, I feel like I want a glass of wine, but my eating stopped at eight. That's it. You can't go past eight o'clock. You can't say at 9.30, oh, I really want that glass of wine. Have that glass of wine at six o'clock with dinner or seven o'clock with dinner, whatever time you eat. If your eating hour is between one and 10, then you do it between, or one and nine, then you do it between those hours. Mine eating hours are 12 to eight. I really only eat between 12 and six because I don't eat anything after dinner. And Lou, he is between 11 and seven but he's the same. He will really not have much after dinner. He does have uh, like a piece of fruit or something right around seven-ish, right at the end. He'll have, you know, like quarter to seven or it depends if he has eaten, he started his first meal at 12 because it all depends on what he's doing during the day. So he tries for like 11 to seven, but sometimes it is 12 to eight. So he just works it all around those hours. Okay. Because it's really not that complicated to do. It's a very easy way to eat. Another thing that's nice about intermittent fasting is you can do it with any diet plan you choose. If you're vegan, if you're vegetarian, if you eat paleo, if you eat Weight Watchers, Jenny Craig, uh, low carb, ketogenic, you can incorporate intermittent fasting into any of those diet plans. I don't look at intermittent fasting as a diet. I look at it as a way of life for me. I have been doing it since mid early March, early March, and I have lost 28 pounds. I went through menopause as of April. Menopause was done. I have gone through. So uh, since March, early March, I started this and my exercise was very limited because I really was uh, having a tough time with some tendonitis at the time I started. And uh, I was having some problems with my arches in my feet, but I still got out there and walked, not as much. And then of course, when I got the puppies, the walking has gone up to daily an hour and a half. And I put in about 16 to 18,000 steps a day uh, in walking. And it doesn't have to be all at once. You can break it up, okay? So I have lost the 28 pounds. I am uh, figuring it out. I am seven pounds from my goal weight and that is the weight I was two years ago before my body started going crazy on me. For the last two years I started gaining weight and I could not get it off and it was weight in weird places. It wasn't weight 
in my shoulders or anywhere. It was in my belly and in my thighs and butt. And uh, anyway, so uh, I tried, tried, tried. I was eating the same, cutting back, starving myself pretty much. Oh, I can't eat that. I can only eat that. I got to measure that out. I got to do this. I got to do that. Now, I still eat a lot of the same foods. I'm just eating them between 12 and 8. And like I said, it's really 12 and 6 that I'm eating. But if between 6 and quarter to 8 at night, I get a little hungry. I go get myself something to snack on because uh, I'm not going to bed hungry. I'm not. I've done those types of diets and they keep me up. So um, any way you choose to eat can fit into this. All right. So um, I'm eating between the hours of 12 and 8. I'm not really cutting out anything that I love. I'm not saying, oh, I'm not eating any grains. I'm not any eating any this. I'm not eating any that. I just eat my normal way. And on the weekends, I will say, we go on date night every Saturday, and that is my splurge. I have a glass of wine on Saturday night, and it's all done before 8 o'clock but I have a glass of wine and I eat whatever I want. Uh, I, uh, don't, um, I don't tell myself I can't have anything because I think you set yourself up for failure when you do that. Now we have to be um, smart about our choices. And so during the week I am a very clean eater and just because Saturday night I eat whatever I want doesn't mean that I just I'm, you know, I blow it for the next couple of days because, oh, Saturday, I ate what I want. I get right back on track. It's just like another meal to me, okay? So um, it can work with anything. Now, a lot of people did ask me about coffee. I'm not a coffee drinker, but Lou is. And Lou has his coffee in the morning, black with stevia. No more half and half. Now, at lunchtime, when he has his mid-afternoon coffee, he has it the way he likes it, with cream and stevia. So it's so between your fasting hours, nothing, no types of food at all. Some say you can have bulletproof coffee because it's coconut oil, it's a fat, and it is uh, butter, and it's, uh, it has no sugar to it. So if you're on intermittent fasting and you like bulletproof coffee, go ahead and give it a try and see if your weight loss is successful. I don't drink coffee, so I can't really steer you in the right direction, there, okay? I so I also drink lots of water. Sugarless gum will help you if you get really hungry before your eating hour starts. I just pop a piece of gum in my mouth and I try to stay out of public. <laughs> but another thing is, is sparkling water. Sparkling water that has zero calories, zero sodium, zero sugar. The one that I like is the LaCroix. I drink this one and my favorite is the coconut. I'm not really fond. I like the passion fruit and I like the berry, mixed berry. I'm not fond of any of the other flavors. This is my most favorite and I love it ice cold. So I will drink a can of that if I start to get a little bit hungry. No calories, no sugar, nothing artificial in there. It's really a great water, okay? And regular water, always regular water. Another thing okay. is, is we need to focus on getting away from the processed foods, okay? Now the things I'm going to show you today, there are some processed foods in here, but they're healthier options of processed food. Uh, most of my diet is whole foods. Most of my diet is vegetables, fruits, salads, smoothie bowls, all kinds of things. People ask, where do you get your protein? You know, you can get protein from nuts, nut butters, all kinds of things. There's protein in almost everything I eat. You can get it from everywhere. Now, if you're, you're really into the, you need to have your protein, you're a meat and potato kind of person, then just make it lean options. Uh, wild salmon, lean organic chicken, grass-fed beef, grass-fed pork if you must. I, I cook all of that stuff for Lou, but I buy the best lean options for him because he is a meat eater. I am not, all right? Okay. And I do want to talk about, you know, people say that uh, there's no, you, you can't focus without breakfast. Uh, yeah, you can. You can. Not everybody. Some people are going to need their breakfast. So you could make your eating hours where it includes that you're eating just from your breakfast until eight hours from there. And then you go to bed. 
Uh, but you do have to not eat after, you know, your, if it's the five o'clock hour, you don't eat. If you go to bed at one o'clock in the morning, that might be a long time. You might get really hungry. So I really time it around my sleeping hours. I really do. Okay. And I also want to mention that I feel my mental clarity is better than it's ever been. And I have to say that Lou has to be highly focused at what he does, highly focused. And he would not be able to do intermittent fasting if that were true for everyone. So again, it's a personal thing, okay? So work it around when your body needs to start eating before you start feeling sluggish. But I think the further along you go, the better you feel. I, I don't have any of that bloated feeling anymore. And another thing that I find is uh, I have no cravings at all for anything. I mean, once in a while, uh, I, but I think it's actually more out of habit than an actual craving. But um, I just don't crave things. And I will say that uh, I eat a little bit less as far as food. I'm not as I'm just not as hungry all the time. So I think my body has really leveled out to what it needs. And like I said, I have about seven to eight pounds to go where I'm back at my weight that I, before my body went crazy on me with menopause. Okay. Uh, and the, the big bonus is the belly fat is, is leaving me. And the big chunks that formed on my hips are leaving me. My thighs are getting smaller. I mean, I'll never have really small, small thighs, but they're getting better. Okay. Right, so, so 28 pounds for me, 20 for Louie. So now I thought I would show you some staples that are in my kitchen all the time that really help me. Uh, again, I do not avoid anything. So you will, I mean, I don't have any bread here, but if I wanted a sandwich, I would have a sandwich. I would just have it on a whole grain bread. Now, some people are gluten sensitive. I try to stay away from gluten. Uh, only because I do think it messes with my belly a little bit. I've been tested. I have, do not have celiac, but I may have a sensitivity to it. I don't make every single thing I do gluten-free, but I am aware of it. And dairy products outside of Parmesan cheese uh, are pretty much out of my diet. I don't eat the yogurts anymore right now, but I do take probiotics every day. And there's another thing that I have that for my joints, I do do the collagen peptide. And I put that in my smoothie bowl usually um, because I, um, I don't want to drink it before my first meal. And I'll have a smoothie bowl usually my first meal. So, and that is to help my joints out because when I don't take it, I notice that my joints really bother me a lot. All right, so I always have brown rice. It doesn't matter the brand. This is just the brand that I use. And I will, I have a rice cooker and I will just make up uh, I put two cups of the rice in and four cups of water, turn my rice maker on, gone, and it's ready for me when I come back. It stays on warm. I put it in a container and I put it in the fridge. You can throw this on salads. You can, you know, just have rice and lentils if you want. Uh, lentils is another thing that is, is another staple in my diet. Lentils and black beans. I love them. And I also, quinoa, now this is black quinoa. I buy bags of black, white, and red, and then I mix them so I have like a rainbow of quinoa. Um, they just have slight different taste to them, a little nuttier, some are, but uh, always have quinoa. Quinoa is a complete protein for those of us that don't eat meat, so protein. Chia seeds, I always have chia seeds. I make chia pudding. Uh, I put it in overnight oats. I sprinkle it on my smoothie bowls. And uh, here you're getting, you know, another two grams of protein, low in carbs, no cholesterol, no sodium, uh, and they have healthy fats, four grams of healthy fats in them. So, so I, I always have chia seeds. I also eat the, um, this is Bob's Red Mill Old Fashioned Rolled Oats. These are gluten-free. I always have this on hand because I make my overnight oats with this. Sometimes I just like a warm oatmeal. So I go ahead, I'm sorry, the crinkly bag near my microphone, sorry. So I always have oatmeal on hand. And I do like the old fashioned over the instant. And here again, you're getting seven grams of protein in here, plant-based, but it's still protein, my friends. So I'm getting plenty. I always have 
whole wheat pasta. This is my favorite brand. It costs a little bit more than others, but it is so good. You don't, we don't even miss white pasta and I loved pasta, loved it. So I always have linguine, spaghetti, or rigat uh, not rigatoni, uh, penne. And um, with this, I will always have rows. I make it sometimes my own sauce in the winter and I freeze it, but Rao's I really like. It is low in sugar. It only has three grams of sugar per half cup and I don't put much more than a half cup on mine, uh, but I love this. It is so, so good and I believe it is gluten-free. So the Rao's is also gluten-free and they have many, many different flavors, but you need to check the sugar level, level in them because they do change. And with the pasta, the whole wheat pasta, uh, there's another eight grams of protein in here. So there's plenty of protein um, for plant-based eaters to get. So now, and now I consider this a processed food, although it has very few ingredients. And that's another thing. When you're buying something, look at the ingredients. If it has a million ingredients in it, then some you can't even understand. Why would you buy it? This has tomatoes, olive oil, onions, salt, garlic, basil, pepper, and oregano. That is it. That's in this jar. And this is pretty darn good. Okay, so we like that. And for Louis, I'll have like a chicken sausage or I'll make a chicken meat sauce and his, I will pour some of in a pan for him and simmer it with the chicken or turkey, whatever. Sometimes beef if he likes it or sometimes pork if he wants. So he has like a meat sauce over it. Cause like I said, Louis likes his meat. I do not, but I love Louis. And I don't feel that I should be judging of Louis because he chooses to eat different than me. Okay. I'm a very uh, open-minded person that way. You have to do what's right for you. Okay, so now uh, sometimes I make my own granola, but other times I don't feel like making my own granola and I want different flavors. So the Purely Elizabeth brand has uh, seven grams of sugar per serving. Now I never eat a per serving. I will take like a tablespoon and sprinkle it on a smoothie bowl or something like that. I never just have a bowl of um, granola ever. And this is gluten-free, vegan, uh, non-GMO. That's another thing that's important to me, non-GMO. GMO. And many flavors in it. This one here is the ancient grain. This is the original and then that's the blueberry. They also have a cranberry. And this one here is really yummy. And this I sprinkle over oatmeal. And this is the maple walnut, but it has probiotics in it and gr granola. And I really do love it. She makes a chocolate one that's really good. Now this one here has um, five grams of sugar. So it has less sugar. And I believe the rest of them, now this one has uh, five gram. Let me see. Let me get my zoom lens, my friends, because I'm pretending I can see and I can't. Uh, six grams of sugar for this one and five grams, did it say five or seven? Seven. Seven grams of sugar in this one, okay? Um, but still, I'm not using a whole serving of it. All right, another staple for me, it is a must, is nuts. And I always have a bag of nuts with me, always. And my preference of nuts, I love pecans, I love halved walnuts, I love almonds, and I love pistachios. But this mix here is just all walnuts. I think there's walnuts, yes. I have walnuts in here, whole pecans, and these are unsalted raw and uh, almonds. And I just keep these with me because if you get hungry and you have nuts, all you need are a few of these. And these are good, healthy fat, lots of fiber, and they're heart healthy. So that's good. Another thing that I always have in the house, and I am trying very hard to get away from adding lots of oils as my healthy fat. So I'm, I'm focusing more on healthy fats, foods, the nuts, and avocado. Now, if you don't like avocado, Kristen Game doesn't like avocado, but if you don't like avocado, then this is not going to work for you. But avocado, when it is perfectly ripe, and for me, it still has to be green. It can't be tinted yellow with little black specks. Um, 
it, you want a, an avocado, this one's not quite ready yet. You need to, it, it'll have just a little bit of give to it. This one's kind of hard, so the outer layer would be soft, but the inside would be hard, so I need to leave this be. But this is great. Um, I, I can eat a half an avocado a day, and it's great over salads. I freeze avocado. I take it out of the skin, dice it up, put it in a baggie, freeze it, use it in my smoothie bowl, so I'm getting a nice healthy fat in there. So there's lots of things you can do with avocado. The next thing I... Uh, like to eat are olives and this happens to be one of my favorite it's Castelvetrano Castelvetrano I'm not Italian okay so these are the olives and I buy the whole olives because I think they have more flavor than the pitted and I just buy jars of these and I will throw them on a salad chop them up or take the seat I'll peel the skin off of this the pit and just put them in a salad and then I have that healthy fat and I have some flavor to my salad also and five olives I think it's five two olives this is 20 calories so if you're eating a salad and you add four olives to it chopped up it's 40 calories and it's all good fats for you there's no saturated or trans fat in here there is quite a bit of sodium in olives but you just don't add salt all right I had mentioned the cavita. These are uh, the coconut waters I like. I'm not big into kombucha. It's just not for me. I got attacked when I said that last time. I don't care for kombucha. I've tried it several different ways. I've tried sipping just a little shot of it. Uh, I feel almost like I've had alcohol when I take a sip of it. I'm very sensitive to alcohol. I never drink unless Louis is with me, ever. And I have one glass, six ounces of wine, that is it, because I'm very sensitive to it. Uh, anyway, so the sparkling probiotics, uh, I do love, and this is my favorite, the strawberry asahi coconut and the mango coconut. They don't have many flavors here um, that I can choose from. When we're in Florida and I go to Whole Foods, I'm in my glory. I'm like a kid in the candy store because there's so many different flavors of so many things I love in Whole Foods that I you know, I just, ooh, I wish one would come here. Anyway, okay, so the Cavita water, I just, there's also a tangerine that I can get that's pretty darn good. I've tried the cayenne pepper, I've tried the ginger, and they give me reflux. These other flavors don't, so I think it's the spiciness of them that give me reflux. Now, ginger in general doesn't give me reflux, but sometimes if I eat some a little too spicy, mm -hmm, I do. All right, so now let's talk about chocolate because I absolutely could not live without chocolate. And that's why I can't go on diets because chocolate is a main staple in my life. And I have um, chocolate every day. And I don't eat the whole bar. I have a piece, you know, two pieces. Uh, and I found this brand, which I really like, Endangered Species. It's vegan, gluten-free, non-GMO. It has 72% cocoa. Try to get up above 70 and Lou eats the 88 for me that tastes like drinking coffee so I can't do the 88 uh, but anyway the dark chocolate with blueberries is a favorite as is the with cranberries and almonds and this is just so satisf satisfying for me sometimes it's just a couple of nuts and a piece of chocolate and I'm good to go now if I want to make like a pancake a healthy pancake I'm sweating bullets here uh, if I want to make a healthy pancake and I want it to be like um, an almond, almond joy, so I want to put some coconut in there and I want to have a little bit of chocolate chip in there. I use the lilies, and the lilies is, now this is only 55% cocoa, but it's vegan, non-GMO, and there's no sugar added. So I really do like to use this, and I just sprinkle a couple on, so it's like the calories, I'm not even worried about it because it's just a couple in there. Now when I really want something decadent, and I did a video on this. I will do dates. I will pit one or two dates, and then I will take almond butter or cashew butter. I really love cashew butter because it's just, it's a little sweeter and there's no sugar added to these. And again, you get eight grams of protein with this, but I will just put like a teaspoon in um, a date and ooh, so good, just so good. Because the peanut butter, because well peanut butter, the almond butter and the cashew, cashew butter, because they don't have any sugar added, the natural sugar in the date is sweet enough and you put the peanut butter, it just balances off, plus you're getting some protein so it slows that absorption of whatever is in here. But again, let's not be afraid of 
sugar that is in fruit, unless you're a diabetic, let's not be afraid of it because there's so many, uh, there's usually fiber in it and there's nutrients, vitamins, antioxidants that, you know, it's, it's going to balance off. Eating a piece of fruit is totally different from eating a piece of candy or just putting sugar in a, over a bowl of cereal. It's totally different than cane sugar. Okay. So this has a lot of fibers in it. This is actually very good. For I love dates too, but I do like to have a little treat with the, um, almond butters. And the, now this is the brand that I have. I actually bought these at Whole Foods and sent them home when we came home from Florida because, uh, I can't get this brand here. This is very expensive, but it's the creamiest nut butter I have ever tried. I love the flavor, especially the, um, um, cashew butter and you can see it's a little separated so I'll just turn them over and the oils and then I mix them up and it mix and blends really well. So love that. I always have bananas. Uh, love bananas and I'm not afraid of bananas. People say you shouldn't eat bananas. Bananas have great potassium in them. Uh, they're very filling. They, so uh, I always have a banana on hand. This one here will go in a smoothie. I will not eat this. Once they get to this point, I, I can't stand the flavor. It's too sweet for me. So uh, this one will go in my smoothie bowl or in the freezer to freeze. I won't let All right, it get. so the last thing, and once I finish up the, I ordered, I didn't order, I bought a big box of these. But once I finish these up, I don't think that I will be able to have these in my home because another thing we need to focus on is know your trigger foods. Okay. And even though this cookie is a fabulous cookie, it has, it has eight grams of fiber in it. It has no eggs, no dairy, no soy, no GMO. It's vegan. It has 16 grams of protein in it. Um, but the cookie is very large and it would be, this is two servings. So this would be 360 calories for this cookie. Now, how do I eat this cookie? I'm having it as a breakfast cookie because 360 calories is not bad for a breakfast cookie and because it's all you're eating. But there are no sugar alcohols in this, no palm oils, no artificial sweeteners, no trans fats, no cholesterol, no fructose corn syrup and they taste really good. Now chocolate chip is my favorite and they are the Lair Lenny and Larry's complete cookie. They are, the chocolate chip is my favorite. Uh, the snickerdoodle is good, but it has that layer of sugar on it and that's too tempting for me. And uh, the peanut butter is kind of bland and those are the only flavors I can find. Now I did go online and they have pumpkin spice, they have white mac macadamia nut chocolate, they have all kinds of different flavors. But I think that this for me is a trigger food that I should not have in my house. So, but these are very good. If you're somebody who can control yourself, you can cut it in half and then just store the other and eat it the next day. I wouldn't save it for too long because they do dry out, but, um, cut it in half and just eat half. But for me, I cut it in half and I'm thinking about it in the fridge. Let's be real. My friends, there are many of us are out there. I'm thinking about it that, Ooh, it's in there. It's in there. I think I'm going to go get it and I'll eat the other half. Can't do it. It's a trigger food where I can control myself with a bar of chocolate chocolate chips, all that. Now this is not a staple for me, but I wanted to share this with all of you people who own cats and dogs because, um, I had taken barley, uh, barley. I call her Harley barley. I had taken Harley to a daycare, a new one. And she had been there a couple of times. And the first time she came home with a little cough, I took her to the vet and they said, well, you know, let's put her on a little antibiotic, whatever. So we did. And then it cleared up and I decided I'd give it another try and I took her and this place gets tons of dogs and they all drink from the same bowl. And I know that's very normal because if you put a bowl down, the dogs are going to gravitate to that bowl. It doesn't matter if you put a hundred bowls down. She came home and she was okay. Uh, she stayed, she was there on a Wednesday and she had to be there a little longer. Uh, usually five hours is the most, but she had to be there for like seven hours. So she came home and she was absolutely fine. And the next day in the morning, her bowel movement was fine, but then by noon, it was no longer fine. And so I immediately changed her diet to brown rice and poached chicken. And uh, I watched her because that's what I used to do with Bindi. Bindi had a very sensitive stomach. So I immediately 
changed her diet and gave her a little bit of pumpkin because pumpkin is very good for either constipation in a dog or diarrhea. And Harley was suffering from diarrhea. So um, I changed the diet and Friday she wasn't really a whole lot better so I thought okay I'll just keep her diet really bland. Saturday I took her for her walk in the morning and what was diarrhea became blood and she had a lot of mucus around it. I immediately brought her home and rushed her to the vets and she got a bacterial infection which created colitis. So she then gave it to Lula. So I was, both of them were having a really tough time. My heart breaks when animals are ill. It just breaks my heart. She will not be going to daycare anymore. I will socialize them in a different way. Anyway, and I know they're going to get things, but um, that's two times at one particular place. No. So, of course, you know I am all about finding things that will heal us. And I thought, okay, I'm going to start uh, with some bone broth. And I'm going to, my, the, the store that I shop at is a specialty store for dogs. It has only human grade dog foods, dry and wet. Uh, they have a lot of raw food there. And you do pay a little bit more, but um, I feel that you save in health bills, vet bills. So uh, I went to the because I used to give this to Bindi. But Bindi, I didn't give it to her. I gave it to Bindi as a treat, not thinking any. It was just a treat for her on a hot day. So I thought, I'm going to go back and get some of those, um, this bone broth stuff that I gave Bindi. So I buy it in little cups. I started buying it in for them, and I would give it to them. So when they got the colitis, I thought, I have to be able to do something for these dogs. Of course, they were on an antibiotic. But uh, we don't like to um, overuse antibiotics. So um, did a short cycle of that, and it really didn't do much for the stool. I mean, the bacteria was gone, but they were still having some problems. So I started giving them this bone broth. And it's, by, it's called Nuggets Healthy Eats Bone Brew. And it, this one here is beef veggie. They have turkey veggie, and then they have... Um, I think they have turkey veggie, beef, and then they have uh, frozen yogurts with probiotics for dogs and cats. And they also have, um, they have uh, turkey veggie in the cup. They have the beef in the cups. And they have, the, uh, they have butternut squash in the cup with yogurt. And so all of their treats became the bone broth. And I am still giving, their diet is still chicken and rice and I pour this bone broth. Now it comes frozen and I, it takes a couple of days to unthaw so you have to prepare that you know like I'm getting low on the other bags so this one is out now and I switch them off one time I give them turkey one time I give them veggie and um, I, I swear this bone broth is doing miracles for them so I happened to be going and buying more and the woman who created it was in the store. She travels from state to state. I guess they're all on the East Coast, which I didn't know, but they ship. And I thought, I am going to talk about this. I'm sure there's other companies out there, but just in case you've never heard of a bone broth and your dog has digestive problems and your cat, she says that the largest amount of her clients are cats. I guess cats with cancer, dogs with cancer, and that's how this came to be. Nugget was her dog, and Nugget was diagnosed with liver cancer, and um, they gave him treatment, but she had always cooked his food for him, but she said, I need to do more because he was having bad days. So she created in her kitchen bone broth, Nugget's bone brew, and that is, she got four years out of her dog. Four more years, she was blessed to have her doggy with her. I'm starting to think about Bindi. Uh, sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, for those of you who may be looking for something to help your dog or believe in the raw food diet for dogs, uh, this is Nuggets Bone Root. I have no affiliation with this company. Nothing at all. No codes for you. Nothing, my friends. I just wanted to share this bone broth that I feel is healing my dog's gut because that's what it's for. This is pasture-raised, grass-fed, and finished. It is 
It's simmered for 50 hours and it's for healthy immune and immune system. It is human grade, grain free, gluten free, and preserv preservative free. I think I pay $17 for this bag and you can give them just like a one ounce on their food. So I get quite a few meals out of this, but um, I'm just I may even stick to giving them, cooking the, my food for them and just pouring the bone broth over so they get all the minerals and the nutrients. And this is bring your dog and cat back to the pure natural benefits of ancestral foods. Our bone brew traditional broth is made by roasting, then simmering the bones with cider vinegar, creating nutrient dense liquid bone. Uh, real gelatin rich bone broth helps protect and nourish the lining of the digestive tract and provides essential nutrients for half, happy, healthy tummies. Bone broth is a staple for gut health diet and it's hormone and antibiotic free. So I will put their link below because they do ship frozen. So anyway, um, you know, if you have a cat or dog that has some health issues or gut issues or, you know, you just want to give them some nutritional stuff and I, I promise you, my friends, I have no affiliation at all. No link, no... Uh, codes, nothing. Just fabulous goodness I wanted to share. Okay. All right, my friends, that is it. I'm sorry this video was so long, but there's so much to cover. Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget, subscribe. We're anti-aging here. Let us know in the comments how you are doing with your intermittent fasting. What style of eating are you incorporating it with? I know many of you started it when I talked about it in my first video and so many of you have been successful at losing weight when for years a pound wouldn't budge. So please share so that others can get excited about losing weight even though they are menopausal or perimenopause. All right, my friends, thanks again. Love you all. Go out in the world, be happy, healthy, beautiful, and most of all, lovable. I love you all. Be, be zoos, my friends, be zoos.